Listen, I'm going to teach a message that I simply uh, titled Consistent Faith, The Key to Overcoming Adversity. How many of y'all have adversity in your life? And how many of y'all know, man, sometimes it doesn't always work out well? And a lot of times it's because we're just not consistent. So today I want to talk about consistency in our faith and spiritual disciplines. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always. Everybody say always. always. Give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Galatians 6, 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. One commentary from 1 Corinthians 15, 58 reads this, says this, because of the resurrection, nothing we do is useless. Sometimes we become apathetic about serving the Lord because we don't see any results. Knowing that Christ has won the ultimate victory should affect the way we live right now. Don't allow discouragement over an apparent lack of results keep you from doing the work of the Lord enthusiastically and as you have opportunity. And so we need to realize that we're to do things as under the Lord. Let me say this. One thing we won't tolerate here is strife. Where there's strife, there's ever evil work. And here's what I know about church world. You know, it's the only profession I've, I, I've been a pastor a long time. I worked at UPS a long time. And you know, when I told people I worked at UPS, not one person said, well, what do you do all day? Not one time. Because they see what you do. I deliver packages. But as a pastor, it's demeaning. And I, 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 years ago, I said, no, no one's going to get away with this. And people would say, well, what do you do all day? And I'm like, are you serious? What do you do all day? I just think it's a horrible, quite like, like we do nothing. We just float around on clouds and listen to beautiful music come on. Someone's feeding us grapes and palm. I mean, this church doesn't just happen because you show up. There's a lot of work and a lot of moving parts that happen before you ever walk in here. It, it flows almost seamlessly, but that's because a lot of work has been put into it. And so the hardest job I've ever had, and in fact, I've hired people that have retired from their work and came here and said, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. You know why? Because you deal with people. And people are fickle. Even some people you think are loyal are fickle because they want their way, not God's way. They, they, they deal with the minors instead of the majors. We have people that whine about, you know, the sound or the music or, you know, they don't like our songs or they don't like what we do, tithes and offerings and, and or whatever. And I'm like, are you kidding me? We just saw 500 and some odd people get born again over the weekend, 640 be baptized. Why, why don't we concentrate on that? Let me tell you why, because we're immature. And, and we can't do that. And, and the reason we're immature is because we're not consistent in our faith. See, and, and it's funny how people do. When they want their way, they go build a coalition and be careful of being caught in that because it could take you to a place you don't want to go. It'd be different if they had a complaint and they just came to the powers that be. But when they go to everybody else in the church, you know they're gossiping. And, and after a while, it won't be tolerated because you just hurt people. You may have a little angst. You know, it's like this. In this church, uh, I don't agree with 100% of everything that happens here. They said, but you're the pastor. I said, yeah, but it's not all about me. It's about you. What's best for the church is what's best for me. Instead of what's best for me is best for the church. It's the other way around. And we have to come to a place where we never let strife or we never let panic or we never let adversity just knock us down because we're not consistent. So the story of Daniel in the lion's den demonstrates the power of consistent faith and spiritual disciplines in protecting us when we face adversity. Being consistent means demonstrating steadfast faith, obedience and commitment of God and his commandments throughout one's life. It invokes cultivating a strong relationship with God through regular prayer, studying your Bible, attending church, and serving alongside others. 
Folks, there's only one way to be consistent spiritually, and these are some of them. You got to give too. But, but Daniel, who was a young man, was taken captive to Babylon after the conquest of Jerusalem. He was a man of great wisdom and faith, which earned him favor with not just one king, several kings. Daniel 6.10 says, it reads, if, if you'll, uh, you follow along on the screen, but when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual. Everybody say usual. usual. It was his usual thing. They knew it, and it was as usual in his upstairs room with its windows open toward Jerusalem, he prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. So what happened was, he was taken captive, and then the people were jealous of him. There was, there was jealousy, and, and they, they wanted to get Daniel because they were jealous of how, how the king liked Daniel and promoted him, and, and, and they, they didn't like it. So they, they tried to, or they did trick the king. They said, oh, king, you know, you, you should make a decree that for the next little bit, no one can worship anybody but you. And if they do, they're going to be killed, thrown in the lion's den. And the king put his signet ring and signed that. And, and the thing about, you got to know about these kings, they were considered gods, Caesar, Pharaoh. So when they made a decree, they could never go back on it because gods don't make mistakes. And so Daniel, who's favored by the king, the king likes him, he's full of faith and wisdom, he, he decides after they make this decree, he goes back and does what he does usually. He didn't hide it. He didn't run from it. He didn't care what it cost him because he knew the moment he did it, he was going to th throw in the lion's den. And isn't it funny, in our world today, we, we, will, we will not do what God wants us to do because we're afraid maybe our boss won't like it, I may lose a job or whatever. We, we won't do the usual because for a lot of us, the usual is not godly. And that's why we panic. That's why when adversity hits, a lot of people get knocked off their horse, if you would, or I could say now to Daniel, a cow. <laughs> because they just don't, they don't know how to react. They don't know how to respond. And so he was consistent in his prayer life, praying three times a day. His consistency praying was the foundation of his faith. And Daniel's faith and integrity were challenged when his jealous colleagues conspired to have him thrown into the lion's den. And despite knowing the consequences, Daniel remained faithful to his spiritual disciplines and refused to compromise. And let me talk about compromise. When you're married, you have to compromise. Because, you know, I may want to go right. My, my wife doesn't go left. She, she may want to go right. She may want to go straight. And so we compromise. She may want this. I may want that. There's compromise there. When you go to work, there's compromise. With your bosses, there's compromise. With friends, there's compromise. But in the spiritual things, there is zero compromise. Either you believe it or you don't. But some people in our world today think there's all kinds of compromise. It's, it's really unfortunate. And we took the faith litmus test in this church without even knowing it during the pandemic. And some people ran and hid and, and believed all the crud, and now all the crud has been disproven. In fact, I was listening to one senator today who was going after Fauci, who should be thrown in prison for the rest of his life and never heard of again. He went after him. He said, you made the worst decision that's ever been made, ever. But he did it for money. He didn't do it because he's worried about our health. And so we, we cannot compromise our faith. Either you believe it or you don't. Now, it doesn't mean we won't make mistakes, and so when you make mistakes, you, you realize I made a mistake, and so you repent, and God forgives you, and you move on. But compromise doesn't work, and Daniel, even though he knew the consequences of him doing what he usually did, so these colleagues of his knew that he would do that no matter what was said. So they, they, they watched him, they turned him over to the king and said, King, Daniel went and worshiped his God, so now you gotta throw him in the lion's den. 
The king didn't want to throw him in the lion's den, but he couldn't change his decree. So he looked at Daniel and said, Daniel, can you, may your God save you. So they lowered him in the lion's den. Can you imagine? That? I can't even, the, just, just thinking about it makes my skin crawl. I, I heard a tiger roar one time in a, when we, when we drove through the zoo that you drove through in your car, and when it, 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 it got up on the fence, and it roared, and I, it, it, it just put chills on me. I rolled up my window. Because I ain't getting me. I'm telling you, if I was in the jungle and I heard that roar, I would just die right then and be like, is he dead? He's dead. His heart just stopped. He's dead. But can you imagine being lowered into lions that are hungry? Hearing the roars, they're seeing him come, and he doesn't know what's going to happen because it's never happened before. See, here's what you gotta understand about Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No one had ever been thrown into a fiery furnace and lived. Nobody up until this point had ever been lowered into the lion's den and lived. And Daniel is going into the lion's den. They're lowering him in there. Can you imagine? I can imagine the fear. Some said, oh, Daniel, was he wasn't afraid. I guarantee it he was afraid. Why? Because he's human like you and I. Now he went, he still prayed, he never compromised, even unto his death. And so what happened was they lowered him in there, the king came running out the next morning and said, Daniel, Daniel, did your God save you? He said, chill out, king. My God sent the angels and shut the lion's mouth. I'm okay. And let me tell you something, when we do what God wants us to do, we will be okay, either here or there, but we will be okay. And that's what we have to do, but what drove Daniel? He was consistent in his faith. He had spiritual disciplines that no matter what anybody said to him, when they told us we couldn't worship, when they told us we couldn't pray, they said they never said that. That's what chanting was in the church. She was so afraid to say, quit praying out loud. So they use the word chant like we're all stupid. And I thought to myself, how dare you tell me how to worship our God? And let me tell you something, it's my habit to worship God. I wasn't gonna change that one day. Not one day, and it's our habit to pray. We're not gonna change that for anybody, especially someone like that. And I have zero respect because they're liars. She got up there and tried to challenge all of us, say, oh, you know what, you know, you guys, we, it, we're following the science. You know, that was a lie. Everybody knows that, right? There was no science. You say, how do you know? Because it had never happened before. How can you have science when nothing's ever happened? And I had Christians tell me, well, we're following the science. I said, you're not following anything. You're following a, a rogue, ungodly leader. That's all you're following. And you know what? People compromise, and they think it's okay, but is it? And what does those compromise cost you? Some will say, well, I'm still okay. Are you? Could you be better? And so we can't compromise. Daniel refused to. Compromise can work again in marriage, your job, but it never works when it comes to our faith. Like Daniel, we should be consistent in our prayer life, reading the Bible, attending church, and giving. We should be consistent. And that's how you build spiritual disciplines. And through this, we can receive guidance, strength, and wisdom to face life's challenges. So being consistent in these disciplines, we can develop spiritual maturity and resilience. And you know what? That's what we all need to develop. We need to become more mature. I watch people today, and they still act like they're two <laughs> or 15. They throw fits, tantrums. If I don't get my way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna go. And it's like, like really? Like that's, that's how we operate? It's your way or the highway? Well, enjoy yourself. Be a nice drive, hopefully. I've been threatened more times than you can imagine. If, he doesn't, if I don't talk to him personally, I'm leaving the church. Well, go. I can't talk to everybody all the time. People don't care if I'm dead, but I care if I'm dead. But you know what I've done for the church? I have developed an incredible team of pastors and ministers to help people. 
And you know what saddens me when people don't care about that? They just want what they want. Well, they don't get that. We don't, we don't put up with tantrums. And you know, we're one of the few churches in this whole state that has the kind of team we have. We get calls from people that go to other churches all over the city, said, hey, we're in trouble. Can you counsel us? Well, no. You say, why won't you counsel you? Because if, what if you need counseling? We're going to go counsel everybody else's sheep? Uh uh. And then they'll tell us, well, my church won't do this. Well, then why are you going to that church? But I have, we have developed an incredible pastoral care team here and counselors. We, we have licensed clinical therapists on our staff that are much smarter than, 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 than I would ever be. I, I realized a long time ago I'm no counselor. I can coach people a little bit. I can give you a little bit of wisdom or encouragement, maybe. But, but you've got to understand that to get to God, you don't need to go through a person. You just need to go to him. And yet God will send people across your path that give you wisdom you can throw things off of. But folks, those are the people who are available. You and I need to realize that how God works. And if our spiritual disciplines are healthy and we're doing some of the right things and we're growing in maturity, then we work through some of these things and then we become resilient. That means when we get thrown, we come back. When, when things happen, we come back. We just, we just, we're just resilient. We, we just never stop. Man, you just got bucked off that. I know, man, it was a bad situation, but my maturity caused me to be resilient. And so I'm going to keep firing. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep riding. I'm going to keep doing what I know to do. I mean, that's the reality of it. But it all starts with being consistent in your spiritual disciplines. And being, by being consistent in these disciplines, again, we can develop spiritual maturity. Just as Daniel's consistent faithfulness was rewarded, we too can expect God's blessing when we remain steadfast in our faith and actions. That's why Galatians 6, 9 says, don't grow weary in well-doing. Folks, if you're doing good, don't grow weary. Because he said, if you don't give up, you'll reap. It'll happen. But it might not take a month. It might take years. My wife and I have been praying for our youngest daughter and her family to go to church for 15 years, right? 15 years. And now they're going. I'm, I'm telling you. But, but we, were, we were consistent in believing God. Yep, and we would say, I would say to God, God, I don't understand. I, I, we trained her. We, I don't get it. But then we become resilient and say, but I'm still believing. Now, I didn't like waiting 15 years. But it doesn't, I don't know God's timing, and I don't know how God really works. When people tell me, I know how God works, no, you don't. You know this much of how God works. Because, and you say, I don't believe it. The Bible says we know in part and see in part. We just see through a glass darkly or dimly. We see very little of reality. Because if we saw more, we'd be different. We'd be more wanting to seek God in, in, a, in a greater way. And so we can't grow weary in well-doing. Keep do, if you're doing good, keep doing good. Because the Bible says, not, not Steve, not Legacy Church, not your friend, not your family. God said that you'll reap if you don't give up. A harvest. And when Daniel faced the lion's den, God protected him and shut the mouth of the lions. Daniel 6, 20. 2B says, my God sent the angels to shut the lion's mouth so that they would not hurt me. And there are times when God moves in our life that we won't know until we get to heaven where God did something for us so we wouldn't get hurt. But that comes from being spiritually consistent. In what? Praying, talking to God. And can I say this to you? Sometimes praying is not talking, is listening. Part of prayer is meditating and, and, and being quiet and being still and listening. That's why you should always have a journal or something. And when you pray after you pray, just listen for a little bit and see what, what thoughts come to your mind. And write them down. And then go back in five months or three months and look them up. You'll be shocked what God says to you and how much it means to your life today. But too many times people think prayer is just doing this. And a lot of times, the only time we really come to God is when we're hurting because we hear these things, it's a false humility. Well, I don't want to bug God. He's got bigger fish to fry. 
People have bigger problems than me. It sounds so, it sounds so humble, doesn't it? I mean, doesn't it sound humble when people say that? I mean, seriously, it, it sounds like they're just the most humble people. Man, they don't want to bother God because my problem's bigger. They, God, take care of them. Don't take care of me. Can I tell you something? That's false humility. That's pride. Because what you're saying is, God, you're a small God. And my problem, there's other, you, you, you're so small that you can only deal with so many at, this, at one time. And we minimize God in our lives. And almost 8 billion people in the world, if every one of them was born again and prayed, God could answer all their prayers at the same time with no problem. Because he's God. But that only comes when we do what we know to do and we're consistent in our faith. And God was blessed Daniel because he was consistent when he was a boy and they brought him into Babylon and the, and the, and the king's guy came to him, the, the chef and the cook and said, you got to eat this stuff. They said, we're not eating that stuff. It's been sacrificed to idols. We're not eating it. Feed us this way. And the guy said, you don't understand. If you don't look good, if they're not healthy, I'm going to get killed. That's a pretty big risk. And so Daniel said, give us this much time. Give us some time and then, then look at us. And when he did, he looked, and their countenance was better, their health was better than all the others because Daniel refused to compromise. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to compromise. And, you know, see, we read the stories like, okay, if I was in front of a fire furnace, God did it for them, maybe he'll do it for me. There was none of that. No one had ever been thrown in that fire furnace and lived. In fact, the jailers who put them in there were burned up because they made it so hot. Can you imagine the king saying, didn't we put three guys in there? Who's the fourth one? There's four people in there. Didn't we put three? Get them out of there. I bet they smelled like smoke or like fire, but they came walking out because they refused to compromise. Why? Because they were consistent enough in their faith to be spiritual mature and say, king, I don't care what you do. I'm never bound to you. I'm never going to bow my knee to you. That's why I don't bow to any of these leaders here. I don't bow to this crazy mayor who has, who has given up on the police, by the way. So he's taking all the money funded by the police and doing other things with it. Why? Because he's weak. He's a horrific leader. But, oh, we don't want to hear that because that's not Christian-like. Yes, it is. It's Christian-like to call out evil and stupidity. But we don't like it because it doesn't sit right with us because you don't know your Bible. You don't know your God. You know why? Because we're not consistent in our faith. Exactly. Folks, you want to worship God, you got to be consistent in your church attendance. You have to be consistent in your prayer life. You have to be consistent reading the Word. And I don't know how long. People say, well, how long? I don't know. Start with five minutes. Read your Bible. Get up five minutes, ten minutes early than you normally do, read your Bible for five minutes and pray for five minutes. And here's my thought, pray for about three or four minutes and then be quiet for at least a minute. And just listen. See what thoughts come to your brain. Maybe some of you need to roll out of bed instead of grabbing your phone, just roll out of bed, get on your knees and pray. And when you first start this, just set your timer. Pray for 60 seconds, you'd think you'd been there an hour. I'm telling you, it's going to feel like that. Like, how long did I pray you're going to do with one eye thing? Like, oh, I got 10 more seconds. Come on. <laughs> That's how it works. And then the more you pray, the more you'll pray. And that consistency in church and reading your Bible and praying to God, that consistency will cause you to mature. So when things happen, you won't panic. You won't freak out. And if you do have adversity and problems and issues and situations, and maybe you don't react real well, real, real well just learn from it and say, you know, I'm going to grow, so next time I'll act better. Next time I won't freak out so much. Because there's people that, man, any little thing happens, they panic, they freak out. They think the sky is falling. It's not falling. The sky is still up there. But it's all about learning to be consistent in your faith. Hebrews 13, 8, what does it say? Reminds us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why is that important? Because we can count on him. You don't have to wonder. 
And when we face adversity, we can trust God to protect us if we too are consistent in what we do. Because when you're consistent in your faith and believe in God and your spiritual discipline, you begin to bear the right kind of fruit in your life. And that's what God said. You gotta bear good fruit. You gotta do what I want you to do. And in times of adversity, we must remember that God is unchanging and always faithful so we can trust in his promises and protection regardless of how long it takes. Pastor, I've been believing God for 20 years. Keep believing him for another 20 years. I know people who have left the earth and on their deathbed they've told me, I've been praying for my whole family to get saved. That's my heart. It didn't happen. But when they had their funeral, it happened. So their prayers were answered. I don't believe when we go to heaven that our prayers are null and void. I still think God honors them. And so they never saw physically their family give their life to the Lord, but they did. And, and I've had guys come up to me and say, my mom always wanted me to do this, so I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna get right. And, 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 and those folks were so consistent in their believing, they believed it even unto their death. What can you believe for that you will never back off from or compromise? And if you say, I don't know, preacher, man, if it takes longer than a day, I'm, I'm out. I wished it didn't take longer than a day. I've said to the Lord many times, Lord, it's okay. I, I, I like serving you. I don't like this faith stuff. And you say, what do you mean by that? I just, you know, faith is you believe you receive when you've not seen. I want to see. How many, I mean, anybody like that? I'm like, I just want to see. Show me. I should live in Missouri. <laughs> Some of you slow, but you're waiting on. Come on, that was, all, that was a little bit funny. Say, what does that mean? It's a show me state. <laughs> Tough crowd. But our consistent faith can also serve as a powerful testimony to others, drawing them closer to God. Consistency in our faith and spiritual disciplines enables us to grow spiritually and mature in our understanding of God's will for us. John Maxwell said, small disciplines repeated with consistency every day lead to great achievements gained slowly over time. I believe that. It's just being consistent. Read your Bible. Five minutes, pray for 60 seconds. Start there, just start. I'm not, I mean, I, I remember when I first got saved, people talk about you gotta pray, well how long? You gotta pray an hour. I'm like, I haven't ever prayed one minute. And if you've ever never prayed and tried to pray for an hour, you think you've been there for, you, you're like being tortured. And then people say when you pray, just clear your mind. Don't clear your mind. You, that's dumb. Because the devil will fill it with all kinds of stuff. And it may not be bad stuff, but it'll be like, I gotta, I gotta call this person, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Fill your mind with the word. Meditate on the word when you're praying. <laughs> Think about the scriptures. Think about what God is doing or what God can do or what, you, what you're believing for. Put, put something in your brain. You know there's not one scripture where God says clear your brain? And even though we do it? Okay, that wasn't very funny. Even though some people have cleared their brain, it's not because God said. And we believe stuff that God never said. So if I don't fill my mind with some spiritual things, then my mind's working. Like when I get done here, I'm gonna go call this person, deal with that, to talk about that, whatever. And then, and then I don't even remember what I'm praying about. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Am I the only one? Come on. I'm not the only one that's like this, am I? And so pray for a minute, pray for two minutes. When you get to two, maybe jump it to five. You'll feel good about it. But that's the starting of being consistent and starting spiritual discipline. You know, it's like working out. I know people that say, you know, in January, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna start working out. They go one time, they work out way too hard, they can't walk, you can't touch them. <laughs> I've had guys tell me, I'm so sore, and I said, we're right here? Like, does that hurt? They're like, oh, stop. 
I, 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 didn't get, I didn't work out for a little bit, you know, when I was sick, and then I started working out. I remember after the first, I couldn't walk later that day. About five o'clock, it hit me like, uh-oh. <laughs> and the next day, I go, I get up and I'm walking like, what the heck, God, what? You know why? Because you do too much too quick. And that's why people quit. They just get sore, and they get so hurt, and they stop. So instead of just going all out, do something lighter. Don't go run a marathon, maybe walk around the block one time for 30 days and then maybe jog around the block for 30 days, then go run a little bit and you won't be dying. And spiritual disciplines are like that. We wanna jump in and just, I'm gonna get all wet and then you drown and there's no one to resuscitate you. Ain't no mouth to mouth happening here. He's, he's dead. He died. Bless his heart. <laughs> oh, here we go again. This is happening. But, it, but that's, that's what happens to us. We get so discouraged spiritually when we just got to start someplace. You have to be, you have to be all knowing and know the whole Bible to start. And then when you learn stuff, just act on it. Put it in your life. And you will make mistakes, you will falter, but that's okay. You just get back up and keep going. What does the Bible say? A righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. That could be a thousand, that could be seven thousand times. Or a hundred thousand times. That's the meaning of it. Just get back up. That's why when Peter said to Jesus, Well, Jesus, do I do I I could forgive him seven times? He thought he was really doing something great. He thought he was bragging, and Jesus said, no, not seven, seven times 70. In other words, you gotta keep doing it. But Peter thought, man, if I do it seven times, I'm spiritual, and Jesus is like, oh, no, you're not. But when you start with God, whatever you start being consistent, for instance, make church attendance the priority, not everything else. God's first, either he's Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. God's first, and so start your spiritual discipline. You gotta learn to pray. Pastor, I don't know how to pray. Yeah, you do. Can you talk? <laughs> Even the deaf can talk. And they can pray their own way. I mean, you have a voice of some kind. Use it. But we think, well, how do, how do I pray? By just saying, hey, God, I'm, I'm a mess. God, I need your wisdom. God, can I get some help here? God, what should I do? Or how about this? God, you're just, you're incredible, you're awesome. You're, you're, you're so great. And what does the Bible say? If we lift the name of Jesus high above the earth, he'll draw all men to him. Too often time in the church, we're lifting ourselves up above the earth, and that's why God's not drawing real believers. And we're not making disciples the way we should. So you gotta be consistent in your faith. First of all, you gotta develop it. You gotta be consistent in your prayer time, reading the Bible, attending church, bringing your tithes and offerings. That's all consistency. Practicing being good to people. Even if you're a mean old cuss, you know. <laughs> be nice. Practice it. That's what we do. We practice the word and practice the word as we're doing it. And then when we come to a pastor, we're like, whoa, that worked. But it's the consistent faith that saved Daniel's life. He didn't back off. He didn't run. He knew what was going to happen. And then what did the king do? When he found out how jealous these guys were, guess who he threw in the lion's den and guess who they ate? Those guys. See, the devil walks around as a roaring lion, but he's not one. I said it Sunday, he's a putty cat. I thought I saw a putty cat. Yeah, I watch Tweety Bird all the time. I remember going home from high school every day, Speed Racer was on. Anybody remember Speed Racer? Go, Speed Racer, go. I used to watch it all the time. Like, I used to go home just looking forward to it, like, I'm going to go watch Speed Racer. <laughs> People say, you kidding? No. There wasn't much on TV back then. And then on Sundays was Bonanza. And the wonderful world of Disney. Anybody remember that? 
and the guy's voice would, you know, the talk like a raccoon or whatever and all the animal things. That was, that was the highlight of my day, of my week, sitting with my whole family. We were consistent at it. And not only that, but we had consistency in eating dinner together. You couldn't be late to, my, to our day when my dad would get you. But they cooked dinner every night. We ate together, no TV, just us, just eating. We were consistent. So we got to know each other and talk and visit. Wasn't always pleasant, but it was something we did. And so what are you consistent in? Are you consistent in not serving God or are you consistent in serving God? What is your consistency? All we gotta do is get consistent. Doesn't mean you're gonna hit it every time or be perfect, it's just you're consistent at it. They knew Daniel was not gonna stop praying they knew that. So they set him up, but God delivered him. The enemy may be trying to set you up, but God will deliver you if you're consistent doing what he wants us to do. In the New Testament, Jesus serves as the ultimate example of consistency as he remained obedient to God, the Father, throughout his life unto death. He was consistent. And you know what people enjoy is people who are consistent. People who are inconsistent all the time, they're hard to deal with, they're hard to be around, you just never know. But if you're consistent, when your family and friends know, hey, don't, don't invite them over on Sunday or Wednesday, they go to church, that's a testimony. And if you're not careful, you know, they'll follow you in because you're consistent. And so our spiritual disciplines need consistency, not perfection, just consistent. You know, at the, the, the beginning of January 1st, I started reading and then listening to a devotion where I'm going through the Bible. So every day I sit down, and sometimes I read it, and sometimes I just listen to it. Four or five chapters, whatever it is. But I've just decided every year, I'm going to go through the Bible every year. I'm going to be consistent again, you know. And, and you, don't, you don't catch it all. I mean, when you go through Leviticus and all that, it's like, oh, my gosh. And when you go through all the begats, it's like, oh, my. These folks were busy. <laughs> but the more you hear it, the more you get from it. And the more you get from it, the more you have to give it out so you can receive more. So you got to talk about your faith. Talk about what you learn. You know, when you get up in the morning, you pray and read the Word, and, and some scripture stands out to you, go, go to work, go tell somebody, call somebody on your way, and say, you're not going to believe what I learned today. And if they're not excited for you, find someone else that will be. <laughs> say, man, God showed me this in the Word. It's exciting. Come on. you got to give it out. If whatever you hoard, you lose. Whatever you give out, you get more. A lot of times before, you know, not so much now, but, but even now I send my sermons to all my execs and my assistant and to the people who put it on YouTube, or what, not YouTube, uh, YouVersion, whatever it's on that you guys follow along with. And I always ask them for comments. So I'm giving it to them, and I said, give me your thoughts. But used to, if, when I was preaching and people say, what are you preaching on? I, I'd call a friend or somebody, they'll say, what are you preaching on? I'll give them the whole sermon in about 10 minutes and say, what do you think? You got any thoughts for me? And as I'm giving it, God gives me more. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. Spiritual disciplines are the most important thing you can do. You got to be consistent doing the right things. And then when problems happen or issues arise or things happen, you, you'll walk through it and you won't, you won't freak out. You won't, you won't panic. It won't be, oh, woe with me. It's like, no, I, I'm, I'm going to do what I always do. This happened. It's not good. What are you going to do? I'm going to go pray. I'm going to go read my Bible. I'm going to go seek God. But when you're not consistent, you know, so even financially, people, well, we're struggling financially. Be consistent in what you give God in your tithes and offerings because then God will bless you. It's when we hold back. If you're going through problems, the last thing you should do is quit serving. You should serve more. Well, my wife and I are having issues. Serve! It's not going to get any better when you seclude yourself or isolate yourself. It doesn't get better. It gets worse. 
I just need to spend time with my family. Well, then spend time with your family. Instead of going home playing video games, watching TV all night, doing your hobbies, spend time with your wife and kids. See, people talk about quality time. I don't believe it's the, it, it's the amount of time, it's the quality. What are we doing? And when you're consistent in your disciplines, whether they're spiritual or natural, you, you get better. You'll grow. When I first started working out, I didn't even know how to work out. And this guy would take me to the track over at Cibola High School. I would run 100 yards one way, high knee. Like run. X, if you're listening, you know who Big X is? Big dude security? He came out one day. He ran once and ended up on the sideline. My trainer said, Do I, should I call the hospital? I'm like, is he dying? He wasn't used to it, and he's a big dude. He just wasn't used to it. I'm not talking about he's a big, strong guy. If he's listening, he's probably shaking his head like, Pastor Steve, stop. But I can remember doing some of those exercises and telling Dave, Dave, stop, man, I'm going to throw up. He said, you got 30 seconds to throw up. I'm like, what? He goes, throw up if you want, but you got 30 seconds, we're going to go do it again. I'm like, mm, mm, mm. I mean, he had no mercy, but he had a plan. And, 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 and his plan helped me get, get in better shape, maybe get a little stronger, but it didn't happen overnight. And, and you don't get to work out for a year and then stop. I've been working out 10 years now. And, and, and it's part of my, my routine, if you would. But I'm consistent at it. What are you consistent at? Are you consistent with coming to church, reading your Bibles, praying, doing what God said to do with your money? Are, are you consistent wherever you go with people? And if you're not, you can be by learning God's ways. And if you look at Jesus or Daniel or so many in the Bible, they were so consistent. Daniel was so consistent that the guys knew we got him. We're gonna, he's going to own the lion's den. They had no thought that God would save him from lions. And they said, this is what he does every day. So let's set a decree. Let's set him up. Sure enough, he didn't close the windows like some people would. God will forgive me. Just close them. I don't want him to see me. He, did. he was wide open. I said, God, the worst thing that happened to me is I go to heaven. And folks, being consistent will change your life. And when problems arise, you won't fall apart and panic. You'll be like, no, we can do this. Why? Because God is for me. And if God's for us, who can be against us? And we know that God's promises are true. And the reason some of us have never experienced them, because we're not consistent in doing them. Years ago in Roswell, we had a guy came one time, and he, he gave a dollar in the offering, one dollar. He came next week. And said, hey, man, I, I need 100 bucks. I'm like, I don't even know you. He said, I was here last week. I gave a dollar. And I'm like, okay. He said, so can you give me 100? I'm like, no. I'll give you your dollar back. <laughs> but he thought because he gave one time that that was it. No, you got to be consistent. Now, if he'd been coming for a year and giving, we might have helped him out if he needed it. But he wasn't. Consistent is not doing it once or twice. It's doing it daily. What do you do daily to grow and mature? And if you, do, if you get consistent with God, you'll look back in a short amount of time and think, man, I've changed. People will say you've changed. Why? Because God can do his work in you then. So let's just be consistent. Let's be consistent in our spiritual disciplines. Just start where you're at. I don't know if I could pray an hour. Pray a minute. I don't just start. Pray two minutes. Pray three. I, it's between you and God, but as you get consistent, it'll be easier for you to pray. That's why you need to get filled with the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit folks. Because your whatever language you speak, Spanish, English, whatever, it's limited because our knowledge is limited. But the Holy Spirit has all knowledge. He's all knowing. Most of my prayer time is in the spirit or other tongues. Why? Because I run out. 
and I run out quick. And most people I know run out quick. And so we, we learn to pray that way, which is God's way. So I know the Holy Spirit will fill my mouth with God's divine will, his perfect will, the perfect prayer for the people I'm praying for, my family, whatever. He, he'll give it to us. But the thing you're consistent in will change your life. And if you're inconsistent, it will hurt your life. God's always trying to take us higher, not lower. And this is just learning to be consistent where you're at. Starting where you're at. Oh, Pastor, I think I can go through the Bible through the year. Go ahead. It's on, the, it's on that Bible app. There's a classic one that I do. I just want the Bible. I just want to get more word in me. That's all. Well, you're a preacher. That doesn't matter, folks. I don't do it because I'm a preacher. I pray and read the Bible because I'm a Christian, not a preacher. Now, I study my messages to preach, but all of us have to be consistent, so I'm praying. I'm encouraging you. Just be consistent. Start today. Be consistent in your spiritual journey. Watch what God does for you in your life. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for being here. I thank you for teaching us. Come on, guys. What's up, Noah? Hi, ladies. Didn't the worship team do a great job? And this young lady, she drives, she drives all the way from Santa Fe to be here. Hmm? She said it's worth it. And she's here all the time, and she can flat sing, sing. She's like, she sang that song. I, I was cheering you on. Did you hear me? Come on. And those two brothers down there, man, they can sing too, big man. You can sing. You sang all your life. Is your dad a preacher? Huh? He's pastoring. He was a pastor. I bet he's happy now, dude. You up here getting down. The first time I heard him sing, I said, that brother can sing too. I, I marvel at people that can sing because I can't. I mean, I can make a joyful noise. That's all I got. But these folks are so faithful. I appreciate y'all. Thank you, guys. You got that young man up there. How old are you, man? Huh? 18. I saw you jam. I was giving thumbs up like, dude, he was rocking it up there. And then old John, he's like 80. <laughs> he said that's close. 69, right? One month, you'll be 69. Look, we got everybody. But they don't develop their voices by being inconsistent. They got to practice. That's all I'm saying to you. Let's practice our spiritual disciplines. Let's watch what God does for all of us. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for being here. Thank you for teaching us for everybody online. Thank you so much for being with us. And I thank you, Father, for touching hearts and minds. And you're giving people thoughts that they can do this. Just start somewhere. You don't have to be start at the top. Just start. Start small so you can develop habits and be consistent, and then, then you can add to it. God just wants you to begin and watch what he does in your life. God, encourage us all to be more consistent in our spiritual disciplines so that we can see your promises come to pass in our lives and the lives of our loved ones and the people we care about. Bless each one in this house in Jesus' name. If you're here with every head bowed just for a moment, or if you're online, and you say, preacher, would you pray with me? I walked with God, but I've walked away. I'm ready to come home. I wasn't consistent. I didn't even know to be. I did give my heart to the Lord, but man, things happened in my life. I got discouraged or whatever. Didn't have the tools to overcome, but you can have them. But you got to come home. Or if you're here and you say, preacher, would you pray with me? I've never really given my life to the Lord. I've never said yes to him in a way that I purpose to follow him. I said yes so I wouldn't go to hell. But folks, there's no, there's no scripture that says you say this prayer and you go to heaven. It says you say this prayer and then you follow Christ. Then you go to heaven. So some of us have prayed prayers forever to get right with God. And we haven't because we've never given him our heart. But today you can. 
It's your choice. So what does it mean when I give him my heart? It means you're going to follow him. You're going to learn his ways. You're going to start. So if that's you, with every head bowed, and you say, preach, would you include me in your prayer? I need, I know I need to be consistent. That's the key. I know it's my inconsistency that hurts me and causes me to stumble at times. And so I want God in my life. I want to give him permission to me so he can lead and direct my paths. So if that's you and you say, preacher, would you include me in your prayer right where you're seated? I'm going to ask you to do one simple thing, and it's so simple. But it's so profound in the same way. If you say that to me, preacher, right where you're seated, are you ready? I'm going to ask you to do this one simple thing. Right now, you ready? In Jesus' name, no hesitation. If you say it's me, would you just lift your hand all over this place? Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Sir, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see you waving. God bless you, ma'am. God does love you. God bless you. God bless you. People say, does God really love me? He really loves you. God bless you over here. See your hand. God bless you. Thank you. So look across the top. Who else would join these? Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm looking across the top. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless, God bless you over here. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. God's in the house. You say, how do you know God's in the house? Thank you so much. Because you don't come to him unless he draws you. So if you have a thought in your brain, man, I need to get this right, or I need to give God permission in my life, that didn't come from the devil. That's God talking to you. When people tell me I've never heard from God, if you've been born again, you had to hear from God and follow his thoughts. And so I'm going to ask one more time. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Just be bold and watch what God does in your life. Anybody else say, okay, preacher, pray with me. I'll lift my hand. I don't care what anybody thinks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I look across the top. Anybody else? Of that? Thank you right here. God bless you, young man. Anybody else as I look across the top, across the bottom? Thank you, ma'am. I see your hand. Thank you. See, it wasn't difficult. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for all the hands that were raised today, the lives that you're changing. And Father, I pray from this moment on as they go forth, they'll, be, they'll learn and, and, and be spiritually disciplined and become consistent in their faith so that when adversity happens, God, they're able to manage it and walk through it, not fall apart, panic. And even if we do fall apart for a moment, we, we, we build resilience and we get back up and say, I'm going to keep moving forward. So, Father, bless each one in Jesus' name. And if you lifted your hand, I'm going to lead you in a prayer now. This is how you come to know the Lord. This is the beginning of your journey, not the end, the very beginning. Would you pray this prayer loud to me? The Bible says we believe in our heart and confess with our mouths. It's right out of the book of Romans, chapter 10. Would you pray with me? If you lifted your hand, pray with all your heart. If, you, if you're already right with God, pray with us in support of those. And, and if you didn't raise your hand, but you should have, pray. Pray with us. Would you pray this? Would you pray, Father, I choose to believe in Jesus. And I believe, according to your word, he's your son. He's your only son. And on the third day, you raised him from the dead to give me a new life. So I thank you. So today, I believe all that in my heart. And now I willingly confess with my mouth, Jesus, be Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for helping me. Teach me to be consistent in my faith, my belief, your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's thank the Lord, church, if you would.